what up ridge youth back at you again with another message uh we're going through the book of esther unseen god visibly at work diving through this book we only got a couple more messages left of this this great book uh in the bible and so uh jump into some of them maybe you didn't get to catch all the messages from before they're all on youtube just go you know feel free to go through them and watch them uh, the last one we just did for such a time as this was the last words that were said uh, in the, the book that we're going through right now. So for such a time as this is one of the biggest taglines that is remembered in this whole book. One of the uh, verses that is reminded about, and it's a pivotal moment. And so what happened is Mordecai says to Esther, maybe you were put in the royal palace as a queen for such a time as this to help. Uh, save and to make something happen and to help uh, God's people and so that's what's going on for such a time as this so if you didn't watch that message I think it's a pivotal moment for us as a youth group to be people that love God that follow him in our family and this time it's a time where it's easy to feel separated disconnected and not part of a family as our youth group should be and so we need to do our job all of us collectively to build a family atmosphere now why we're separated and also around the corner when we finally can uh, come together and build relationships personally uh, interacting we need to build a family now and so uh, for such a time as this, this is a pivotal moment for us we need everybody to do their part uh, we need all of us to collectively decide if we're going to be on board to make this uh, a better a better place and a better family because uh, God has placed each of you in this youth group, not just because, you know, like your parents may go to the church and so you have to or uh, you feel obligated or just random. Um, you're, you're here and apart for a purpose. And God has you here in this exact time to make an impact uh, for him. So picking up in the story, we'll find out exactly what happens after uh, Mordecai gave that that statement to, hey, probably for such a time as this, Esther, you were placed here to make a difference. And so let's see what her response is in Esther chapter 4, verse 15 through uh, to the end of the chapter. Then Esther sent the reply to Mordecai, go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. And this is so important that whenever we're going to step out and do something, anything in general, we should ask God to be going before us asking God to be leading the way. And the way that they're doing that is by praying and fasting. And so in small ways, we need to do this. But in this big pivotal moment, this is the right thing to do. Pray and fast that God would do some miraculous work. Miraculous work. He does the impossible. And so uh, this is the whole message today is putting your life on the line. And Esther is willing to do this. She says, and if I perish, I perish. She knows that that's a more likely scenario or result that's going to happen is she's probably going to perish. That that's probably going to be the result because of the law that is written. And so she is putting her life on the line. Why would she do that? For herself? It's not just, I don't think it's just selfish reason because she wants to preserve her own life. I think she's doing this to save other people. She's doing this because she knows that it's what God wants her to do at such a time as this. It's not just for selfish reasons. She's doing it because she loves God and she loves other people. She loves her family. She wants to save her family. And so that's why she's willing to do this. And so we pick up in the story just one more verse we're going to read. Uh, and so it says, on the third day, this is Esther chapter 5 verse 1. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes. I'm just going to stop there. We'll finish the rest of that verse. She puts on the royal robes. What is that saying? Pretty much she's in. She's all in. She's putting her life on the line. It is game day. And so for me, uh, looking back, uh, you might not have played sports. You might play sports here and there. 
But man, I love game day. I love the feeling of excitement to know, oh man, we're playing someone today. What's going to happen? Uh, can we get that win? Can we compete? Uh, can we? You, the, just that feeling of excitement. And of course, there's nervousness that was a part of it. I would probably, the first game of the season in the fall, of all the training before that, for the weeks before, um, you know, running all those miles, doing all those drills, there was a nervousness that first game, like more nervousness than the, the games after because you're like, I haven't played in so long. I feel rusty. Um, is our team going to be able to gel well together? All those things. And so I would have to take like 1,500 uh, bathroom breaks before because I was just so nervous that first game. And so this is game day for Esther on a bigger scale about something that actually matters, not just a sporting game. Um, but something that matters so much to so many people, life and death situation. This is game day. Uh, she puts on her royal robe. She's like, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm putting my life on the line for my family, for other people, for God. And so that's just a challenge to all of us. Are we putting our life on the line for other people? How do we know if we're doing that? Are we willing to love them? Are we willing to make God's reputation known? If we never make God's reputation known, then we're probably not putting our life on the line as much as we think. If we're not willing to tell people we're a Christian, if we're not willing to invite them to things, if we're not willing to say, hey, I'm going to pray for you because I know you're struggling. If we're not willing to do things, we're probably not all in with God and we're probably not putting our life on the line for them the way we should. We need to love God and love other people. We show that by risking our reputation for him sometimes. And so she puts on her royal robe and she stood, stands in the inner court of the palace in front of the king's hall. And the king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall facing the entrance. And so Esther, she's putting her life on the line. She's all in for God and for other people. And so we need to do that same thing. But what's, why, why? Is this something that just Esther did? No, there's tons of stories of other people, people of faith, putting their life on the line, being all in to love God and love other people. But there's someone that did it in the most biggest, important way that possible, and that was Jesus. He put his life on the line for us because, not for himself, but for, for God and for his people, for a relationship to be built between us and him forever for eternity to save us to forgive us to um be there in all of our pain to walk walk alongside of us to build a relationship that had been broken that chasm because of sin he built a bridge to us he was all in for us and that's the reason why we go all in for him is because he went all in for us why do we love him because he first loved us and so we need to do that we need to be people that are all in for him, putting our lives on the line for other people to love God and love others. And we're not going to see exactly what happens in the story yet. We only have a couple more messages. We'll get there. Uh, but we need to be people. This is a great pl place to stop and ask ourselves the question, am I living all in for God? And living all in for God, it starts, yes, with a moment, maybe making a decision, praying a prayer. But it all in is a daily thing. All in for God is a daily response saying, hey, I'm all in today to follow you with saying the right things, doing the right things, loving people. We're not going to be perfect, but it's an all in decision. And so for me, uh, that, that excitement about it being game day uh, that I had back in the day, I miss that feeling. But God, I feel God speaking that to me very often and a lot of days like, hey, you might not feel like it's that kind of game day, but it is an important day. Today is game day. Are you going to suit up? Are you going to suit up and participate in what I want to do? Because actually that temporary game that you were so um, invested in, there's something more important at stake right now. And are you going to suit up in its game day? Or are you going to sit on the bench? Or are you going to do something even worse instead of sitting on the bench? Are you going to sit up in the stands and just be try to be entertained? And I feel like God often has to be, calls me out and is like, hey, 
put your jersey on, quit sitting on the bench. This is game day. This is way more important than your college soccer career was. This is way more important. People's lives are at stake. Are you all in today for people, for me? And I feel that I get challenged. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's game day. Let's do this. Let's do this. And I have to have God encourage me on a weekly basis, sometimes on a daily basis, to be like, it's game day. I'm all in, not just for myself, but for other people and for God. And so let's be people that do that. Let's be all in for him. Let's see what he does when we all collectively are saying, I'm all in, I'm all in, I'm all in. When we all do that, we're going to see God do amazing things because he moves. He responds when we earnestly seek him. He brings his blessing. He brings his promises. He just shows up in amazing ways. And maybe you feel like you haven't seen God show up in a lot of ways in your life. When we are say, hey, I'm all in. When we begin to build a strong relationship with him and a strong relationship to love other people, we will see God do amazing things because it's real, it's authentic, it's true, it's not just a religion, it's a relationship. So let's be people that do that, put our lives on the line, let's be all in. It is game day. Right now with what we're going through right now, it is a pivotal moment for us. This is game day for us as a youth group, as individuals. Are we going to step up and put our jerseys on and get on the field? Are we just going to watch and sit back? And wait for it all to subside, wait for the clock to go down, and then be like, good, I don't have to go in. I was so nervous. I'd, I'd rather have someone else go in there and do it for me. Yeah, that's possible. But God is calling us each individually to play our part because the more people we get out there contributing to the cause, to his cause, the more we can see happen because our energy is able to multiply, our reach is able to multiply. Our kingdom impact is it being able to multiply when we get more hands and more feet out there to love people, to be what he's called us to be. And so let's do that. Let's not look to someone else to be Esther or be like Jesus. Let's do it ourselves because he's calling each of us to do it. We love you guys. Man, I so miss you. I can't wait to just have you guys over at my house and have a bonfire and to hang out and make uh, some s'mores and to play some games and to just have fun and laugh. Um, all those things, man, I miss it. And so I hope you miss it too. And so let's continue to connect with each other as much as we can through virtual uh, life groups, through texting each other, through caring for each other. And let's love people, love God. Let's be all in and think about this the next week. Love you guys. Take care. Have a great week.